Hi, I'm Gavin, and welcome back to The Sound Project. I want to let you know we have some awesome recording studio tours coming up, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on these amazing videos. Okay, so today we have the pleasure of uh, having Brad Smalling from Evergroove Studios here at uh, the NAM show. So we're set up remotely at the NAM show, and Brad is kind enough to join us on the podcast. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's, it's an honor to, to be a part of this. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. So I've known you for a little while. Uh, actually, uh, Josh Estock from Folk Chow. Josh. Josh is the best. I love uh, Josh. He, um, he's been on the podcast too. Has he? So, yes. God, yes. I'm behind on the podcast. That's I gotta right. watch him. Well, we, Don't be like me. We chased you down and, you and now you're here. You so, um, But yeah, Josh introduced us because uh, your studio was converting from stereo to Atmos. Yep. Um, and uh, um, had some conversations back then, helped you with a few things. And and uh, it's just been awesome getting to know you. And, Absolutely. And, and uh, real big fan of your work. And, Thank you. And uh, um, so I wanted to... For any of our, our viewers that don't know you, um, they should know you. So maybe let's talk a little bit about um, kind of your background, how you got into uh, what you're doing. Oh, that's... And I it don't can know. be as long as oh, or as short as you want to. I don't know that we should tell that whole story. That would take up... People would, you know, <laughs> people would swipe. I, I think so. <laughs> um, I'll try, I guess I can try to shorten it. I mean, I, I started playing, you know, like, like a lot of engineers, I started playing guitar when I was young. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I started playing and then, uh, I wanted to go to college for, and, you know, get a music degree. Um, and then back then, I won't say how far back that was, but back then with a music degree, uh, the joke was, all right, so which insurance firm are you going to sell insurance for? <laughs> so <laughs> right. you either had to be a session player on the, you know, the East or West coast or, or, or teach lessons and, and, and all of that's valid, but I didn't want to do that. That's yeah. not where I wanted to be. So I, I just, I stopped going to college. I didn't, cause I was just just racking up debt. Sure. Um, and in the meantime, it was like, you know, I really kind of want to learn recording. I had done some light recording. I was in a punk band and we recorded in our drummer's, is it drum? Yeah, drummer's father's living room. Okay. On a, on a, on a four, four track, environment. Four, oh, it was great. Four track reel, it was punk rock. Yeah. So four track reel to reel and the, 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 his dad had even built the guitar player's cab. And we wow. just holed up in there and we were, we were 13 year olds that didn't know any better singing songs about shut up and give me a beer it made no sense no <laughs> sense and then in the same in the same ep you'd have a song called responsibility all 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 like dramatic so um that kind of like that kind of stuff really triggered being curious about recording mm -hmm. so i uh, interestingly enough I, I met jenny my wife who owns the studio um way back then when we were dating we went up to middle tennessee state and toured the facility mm -hmm. um i applied i was accepted but then didn't go i just kind of got wrapped up in life yeah. So sidetrack into information technology. I happen to be good at computers. Nice. I did that for 10 to 12 years. But during that time, like, like while I was doing all of that, I was slowly teaching myself. And then, you know, you go through layoff after layoff. And then looking back, we, we kind of joke about this. And um, I, I, think, I think we can all laugh about this a little bit. We said, we need to take control of our own finances and our future. <laughs> and we should open a studio. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, you know, you're like, back then it was like, yeah, but yeah. now you're like, wow, that's kind of naive, but the best decision I ever made. And right. so we, you know, we were, uh, we were living in Boulder at the time. Um, how we got there's a longer story, but we were living in Boulder at the time and we started looking for a house that had some sort of outbuilding, some sort of garage or a garage with something on top of it or whatever. And then one day from, you know, I was in the kitchen and from upstairs, Jenny just goes, I found it. And I said, okay. So I go upstairs and there was this little log cabin and I had a garage, an oversized garage. It was a mm -hmm. two car garage with a shop. And um, I said, let's go look at it. And I, I think I think a week later, we, we like back then you didn't have to rush, right? right. You know, we, had, we, we put an offer in within 48 hours and, and the deal was done a week later. Like mm -hmm. it was, it, it happened fast. But then it was, uh, so I was a one, we didn't start building the studio until 03. And then we okay. didn't even open until 06. It was a very long process. Yeah. Yeah, it does take some time. Uh, that's one thing that I always try to talk to clients about like when we start a project. It's obviously there's a lot of excitement around a new Absolutely. studio and everyone wants to get to the point where it's finished. And and we do too. We, we, we want to get it wrapped up as soon as possible, but it's just that it, it takes so much longer than you'd ever expect. And uh, there's always, you know, little detours that you have to go down. Um, sometimes they go super smooth and they can go quickly, but um, I, I just always try to prepare people for that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, 
the funny thing is, is the, uh, the person that designed our studio originally didn't want to. This was back in the recording.org days and they had an acoustic forum. Yeah. And I would, I would, I would post like drawings and then he would comment and say, you're close, but you really need to think about compression here and all like all mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. And so I wrote him and I said, Hey, you know, um, would you design a room for us? Like, what do you cost? And he actually kind of said, no, he goes, I don't really want to. I really like this little mentorship we have going, you know, mm-hmm. like he was really supportive. That's nice. And this is, you're going to laugh. I said, yeah, but I don't want it to take a year. So instead <laughs> it, it took, took three years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, uh, from, I haven't been to your studio, but I've obviously seen photos and, and some videos that have been shot in there and it looks beautiful. Thank um, you. And, uh, um, Wes Lachaud designed it. I'm, That's correct. Uh, yeah, Wes yeah. Lachaud. Shout and, out to Wes Lachaud. Yeah. It's he, absolutely. he, uh, um, does great rooms and, mm-hmm. and, um, uh, but yeah, I'm excited to visit sometime. Uh, You're welcome. I'm anytime. Call. Yeah. It's, you know, it's absolutely a shout out to Wes. People, you know, as an engineer and you have a studio and you have, you know, engineers, you know, up and coming engineers, like what's, what's the best thing you've ever bought? What's your favorite piece of gear? Yeah, what's yeah. the, what's your, what's the, what, what should I go buy? And I mm-hmm. said, my monitoring environment, like this room, Yeah, this room is my best investment I have ever made. And it's, yeah. it's the lamest answer. Cause everybody's like, no, what's the microphone? Like, no, without right. this room, without the, without the way this room works, yeah. I c- literally can't do my job. Yeah. A, a lot of our clients say that same thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's way more fun to buy the gear. You know, it's like right. you get a, a new compressor, a new microphone, or a new set of speakers, but, um, you know, any of that stuff in an environment that isn't conducive to good sound, it's, you never get your full benefit right. out of it. And so, uh, yeah, it's important to have a good room. And and uh, so I know, um, l- let's talk about when you started the business. Like, I, I started my business about 15 years ago or so. Okay. And uh, I am not a risk taker. It, to start my own business was like a, it was a pretty hard thing for me to do. Sure. If my wife didn't push me towards it, I, I wouldn't have done it. Because I went to school as, uh, I had a mechanical engineering degree with a robotics focus. And I've just got the engineer mind yeah. and I want to know all the variables and all the constants. And it's like, there's just too much risk in starting a business. But um, she kind of pushed me. Now, were, have you had that kind of um, spirit to start your own thing for, for a long time? Or was it a hard transition? Oh, um, it was... <sighs> Shout out to wives and significant others and those that support us. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be doing this. Sure. I mean, her support has been tremendous. And it was really her that pushed it. She said, I think we should do this. She yeah. said, and honestly, like, we'll, we'll get a little personal for a second. I'm happy. I'm, I'm very open about this because yeah. I, I really believe in people, you know, trying to find a way to follow what you love. Yes. And that is, um, apparently, when I was in IT, I just wasn't my best self. Mm-hmm. I wasn't my best self for her. I wasn't my best self for me, even though... Oh, Brack, I was very good at what I did. Yeah. But I was miserable at work. And so I was miserable at home. And I was making her life miserable, not intentionally. Like, just, I was just grumpy all the time. Yeah. And then there was like a moment, like, the the studio was kind of done, or we were working on the studio. I forget what what the exact trigger moment was. She walked up and she just smiled and she hugged me. And I said, What's up? And she goes, I have my Bradley back. Oh, man. And I, I almost. I kind of want to cry now. Like yeah. I almost start. I was like, I have just not been not a bad person, but just not the best self, the best person that I can be for her and, that, and I mean, for me. So that's that awesome. was really, really impactful. So it was so, and, and it was so. She, she, she said, I really think we should do this. And um, I had gotten a little bit of a severance to jumpstart it from a, a layoff. It wasn't a lot, <laughs> but that was supposed to be the budget, and that doubled. Mm-hmm. That doubled fast. So I'm sure we're <laughs> going to talk about that, but yeah, it does. You know, it's it's. It's terrifying because mm-hmm. while you're building a studio on your own, doing a lot of the work on your own, although you know, although we had help, I was, you know, I'm hanging 12 foot sheets of five eights with a broken finger at 2 a.m. <laughs> to get this thing done because I had day jobs too. Yeah. So you're doing all of this and then you get so, so into it. You just wonder like, maybe we shouldn't do this, but it's too late. You have to keep have moving to keep forward. Going. You have right. to take a deep breath and lean into the problem and keep moving forward. So get to the point where we, we feel like we can open. And then I still had a day job. I would, I would get up at four to leave at five to be at work at six as a commercial electrical apprentice. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, get off work at um, three, be home by four. And then either, either, you know, when we were finishing the studio or then maybe do session work mm-hmm. or do then do session work on the weekend. It was three years before I actually paid myself a salary. Wow. And it was two years after that, before I gave myself a raise. And then I, 
it's 18 years later and I still wonder if I'm going to have a job tomorrow. Like that <laughs> feeling never goes away. No. So I, I get it. It's, it's kind of terrifying. Yeah. I, it, it is like, I, I'm, like I said, I'm 15 years into this business and at, especially it's, it's uh, at the turn of the, going from uh, past the new year, my mind always goes to, well, how in the world are we going to do that again? Like, <laughs> you right. know, we, we did yeah. like all of this right. in this year. Like we had a, a podcast where we just recapped 2023 and we talked about all the stuff I love that we doing did. That. Yeah. And, and it was great. Um, but I don't allow my mind to sit in the winds long enough. Yeah. Like I just moved to the, oh no, like oh, we yeah. got to do that again, you know, and it's, it's really hard. I actually, um, uh, a uh, friend and, and business partner of mine, uh, Garnet, he, he told me, the way to get around doing that is just to have what he calls like five alarm bells and you pick five things yeah. in your life that if those five things are good, you shouldn't be stressed out. Oh, that's great. It is great. I'm stealing that. Yeah, it is awesome. And so it's like you, you pick those five things and it can be, you know, my, my family's healthy. I have yeah. a home, you know, I've got food and clothing, you know, things like that. Real basic things. But if you wake up in the morning and those, those alarm bells are not going off, you should oh, chill that's out. That's fantastic. All right. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write those down and put them by the side of my bed. Yeah. So when I wake up and turn my alarm off, I just yep. see them like okay. Because I have I have the um, I don't know just the disposition where I just like will like to um, make up problems that don't exist and then stress about them. Absolutely. And, yeah. And I think Absolutely. maybe a lot of business owners just have that. Um, but it is a, it is a thing at the beginning of the year where you're just thinking like okay well. You know, even though every year for 15 years this thing has grown and, and increased and, and uh, we've been able to do more and more cool projects, you always think like, oh, okay, how is it going to be possible to do it again? So Right. We, I haven't done it. I honestly haven't done this in a couple of years, but I would, I, it was almost the opposite for me. Mm -hmm. So right around, you know, right around December, we're busy, but then you shut down because of Christmas. Mm -hmm. There's always the last two weeks or they're yep. slow or... Or you're, you're grinding all the way up until you stop. But then I don't sit still well. So over yeah. the Christmas break, I'll stop and just go, why aren't there emails? <laughs> yeah. Why isn't the phone ringing? Why, is it, why don't I not have work? Why do I not have mixes <laughs> to do? And so I, what I, what I, if I get too far down that hole around the new year, I will stop and go back through the calendar and not remember, I will write out a list of every project we worked on yes was it mixing was it mastering was it mm -hmm. atmos was it remote work was it all of the things that we do yeah. and it's a long list yeah and i ask myself how did we do all that yeah right well and and one thing that i also do now um because i've just been working through this at the beginning of this year is that like your brain cannot be fearful and anxious at the same time that it's grateful Oh, yeah. Like, that's physically impossible. Interesting. So, like, that's why people, you know, they, they list out gratitude lists and, okay. and start their morning with listing off things that they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. And if you're truly intentional about that and you are actually grateful, you're not, not just making a list, then you can't be anxious and fearful about stuff at the same that's time. interesting. I had no idea. Yeah. And so that's like a way to, like, level set your day. It's just like, hey, I'm, you know. I, I'm appreciative that I have this business and I get to work with amazing people. And, and uh, it's a good way to... Now, I, I'm not saying I'm good at it yet. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying. Um, but it is something where, you know, I think I, I was just talking to another business owner uh, last week with the same kind of mindset and same kind of challenges. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I, I think it's the kind of fear of the unknown is not something that you can ever like completely get away from. It's just right. like how you manage it. So. No, exactly. And that that fear used to manifest um like if an if an artist went to another studio for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, we're 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 a little bit outside of Denver, so it could be location. It could be budget and we're not we're not you know, we're we're, we're not the most expensive, we're not the cheapest, but still sometimes we're out of budget. Like you understand that, right? And so if it didn't matter the artist if they didn't choose us for some reason, I went into a deep dark spiral. Yeah. But like for years, I would be like, oh, no, everything's wrong. We need to lower our prices. We need to do this. Right. And it was just recently. So when we when we installed our Atmos rig in 21, we hired a business coach. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to make sure that we were moving forward with this change with a completely new mindset. Yeah. And she taught us, her name's Lisa Zahia. Shout out to Lisa. She taught us, it's okay if they say no. 
It's yes. okay if they go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You can't be the studio for everybody. Right. Because if you're the studio for everybody, then not everybody's going to be happy, right? Yeah. Or people are going to pay too much or whatever it is. And you're not going to do your best work. But when they go somewhere else, it leaves that hole for the people that do want to work for you, yes. that can want to work for you, for that you are their studio. Mm-hmm. And the minute that I actually said, okay, an email came in and they're like, you know, we really love the place. It's a little too far. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. Oh my gosh, it's, we need to open a studio in Denver. I need to take out a loan. Like I need to like <laughs> eight, almost 18 years later, this was, it was 16 years later at that point. I'm still thinking this. And I said, no, 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 let's just try this. It's fine. Yeah. And so, you know, you're writing back, okay, I understand it's fine. You know, please let us know if we can be of assistance. Mm-hmm. And then just really let it go. And within, I don't know, four or five days, the hole was filled. Yes. Another band came along that just, and, and it, you know, you know, some people say that, you know, things happen for a reason or mm-hmm. believe in what you will. Yeah. I'd like to think that it's just simply that I just took that energy and then just put it into maybe it's social media or maybe it's outreach or emailing people mm-hmm. better or more, I don't know, do, doing whatever it is that you do when you're supposed to do those things. But yeah, I, I think that we did kind of the same thing in like 2021. We hired a business coach as well. Mm-hmm. And like, it's funny to do that. 13 years into the business, but it's a, it's, it, it feels backwards. <laughs> it feels like I should have done that year one, but, uh, but it was, a things were growing for us to where for the longest time, it was just me like eight, eight to nine years into it. It was oh, yeah. just me. And then now I have uh, seven employees and, and so yeah. it's, it's like a, a, it's just a different animal. And so it felt like a good time to really like, we, we put together our core values, which is the reason this, uh, things called the sound project because sound is the acronym for our core values and oh. and uh, and and we also defined who our ideal customer is and okay. and it was really good because sometimes those people who say no it's like well also they don't line up with with what our core right. customer is and so it's okay and they probably have some there's some better fit out there for them and there's a better fit for us so yeah. it's, it's all good exactly yeah yeah um, so how do people typically find you? Is it, um, word of mouth and referrals type of thing, or do you do any like advertising? We're, we're looking at leaning into advertising. Mm -hmm. Um, it's mostly word of mouth referrals. Um, I I do think it's longevity in Mm -hmm. the scene that we're in. Yeah. When we opened, uh, in 06, you could probably count on one hand the amount of like truly pro studios in in the Denver area. And now you, you need, you need a good set of, <laughs> of fingers and toes. And, th- and that's great. That's a thriving community. But right. there are so many studios that if you were to open a studio now, I just think it'd be really, really hard mm-hmm. uh, right now, uh, at least in our area. But, um, you know, I, I think some of that is just staying the course and longevity, yeah. getting the name out there. And then, um, you know, we just get it like you get up and you do you try to just do better than you did the day before. You do the next project better than you yeah. did the project before and just just you just got to keep on. So I, so I, it is, it is word of mouth. Um, I do think it's longevity too. Yeah. I think, yeah, the, the longer you're in it and the, if you always do good work and you do right. the best thing for your clients, then you have walking advertisements everywhere. Like, it's right. like yeah. where did you do your, your album at? Well, is Evergroove. And, and they talk about that experience in a glowing review and that right. they, they tell everybody when they have a good experience. And we try to do that in our business too, is that working with us, um, it's, usually pretty pretty easy and light and not not stressful and Absolutely. that's not always the case sometimes in studio design and uh <laughs> and that you know resonates with people and they they then tell a bunch of people so we we haven't done really uh, a ton of marketing until you know, all the social media push that we're doing now with the podcast and studio tours that we're right. doing and everything and that has made a huge impact for us um but even if we just relied on on uh, word of mouth, we would be busy, you know. So it's it's a uh, it's a nice thing. But I do think it's a, a combination of doing good work, but then being in it for long enough that you have a lot of lot of experience. So that's that that's good to know because we our 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 current mentor, um, we have a, a new mentor named Atlanta Cobb. Um, she is really moving us to to lean into social media to yes. take that deep breath and lean into that problem because. And you can imagine you open a studio 18 years ago, you start building a studio 21 years ago. Yeah. There's barely Facebook. Yes. Right. Right. We, like Evergroove had a MySpace page. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's how, that's how, that's how young we are. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, as you go through and as you grow, like you hit year 10, you hit year 12, next thing you know, you're at year 15 and you haven't really had to work on that. Mm-hmm. So now we are. Yeah. So. Well, and I will say this from, from what we have done, um, 
I was skeptical a little bit. I think naive about how much of an impact it could have. Right. Like even just starting this podcast, it was Ryan's idea to do it. And I was like, well, who's going to want to listen to me talk at all about anything? Um, and then it's, but it's been such a good response. Like people really uh, like regularly tune in. And, and when I go places, they're just like, oh yeah, I watch the episodes. And, and, um, and then also the studio tours, like there was one week where we got eight out of our 10 referrals uh, that we got that week, they said they found us on YouTube. Well, that's incredible. And it was like, wow, okay, this is this is it really works. a thing. It works. So we're leaning into it and and uh, doing more of it. Like I think, you know, this year we're releasing a studio tour like every three weeks. Uh, cool. So like 17 over the course of the year. And um, I think people really enjoy seeing those things. And yeah, so, yeah it'd, be, it'd be great to tour your space. You're welcome point. anytime. Yeah, that'd yeah be awesome. absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about your uh, transition to Atmos. Because okay. obviously that's, everybody is is thinking about it. Some they people are, are doing it, some people are not. Um, but it seems like you were kind of on the early uh, side of things of, of uh, making that decision. Like how, what went into that thought process? Um, it's going to be interesting because it, it, it at the time it felt like such a really, really crazy move. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny because everybody has said, like, you really seem to be on the, the leading edge of that or ahead of the curve. It's a time where you felt like we were already behind because yeah. stuff was already happening. Sure. So I first experienced Atmos at NAMM 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was ATC had a, a half wall, the glass half wall thing, whatever. Yes. Um, and they were playing Beatles and, and there were some suspended speakers. And, and you check it out. And like, it, this, seems, this seems cool. Um, Okay, and you kind of go about your day because there's not much more about Atmos going on. You're just like, oh, okay, cool. There's a new surround going right. on. And that was 2020. And so then, you know, the big shutdown. And so as we're going through 2020, you know, Jenny and I are uh, have a little bit more free time because bands aren't coming up. Although we didn't completely have to shut down. We had a backlog of mixing and mastering. So we stayed busy. We stayed in the black. Yeah. You know, it worked. We made it work. Um, but we would we had a lot more conversations and was saying, you know, there's this technology that I, that I experienced at NAMM and it's called Dolby Atmos and, you know, primarily, you know, was debuted for movies, but now they're starting to look at music and, uh, you know, Amazon and Netflix and all this stuff. And she goes, wait, so if we had that, we might have been able to do different business during this shutdown. Mm -hmm. I said, yep. She goes, you need to look at that. Yeah. And that's what I mean, like ha- having these significant others, these spouses that support us and say, mm-hmm. hey, they have this outside view. Because as, as the, you know, when you're looking at putting all the technology together, you're like, but this is going to cost a lot of money. Right. And she goes, <laughs> yeah. well, let's look at it. So we start looking at it and um, I start putting together the pricing and start really, really talking about it. And she's like, yeah, we, we need to do this. Mm-hmm. And so I, I had only heard it at NAMM 2020 for a song. Mm-hmm. Hadn't even worked in it, but she, her gut has, her gut reaction, like her gut feel has always been correct. She goes, I have a really strong feeling about this. Yeah. I said, all right, I'll start putting the budget together. <laughs> so I start putting the numbers together and I start showing her and I'm like, do you see this number getting bigger? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she goes, I understand. Keep yeah. going. It wow. was, she was amazing. She's like, keep going. Okay. So we keep going and we put it all together and that, you know, I um, already had a relationship with Tick at PMT Audio mm-hmm. out of Denver. Yeah. Tick connects me with Josh. We start specking speakers. Yeah. Um, Josh connects me with you. Yeah. All of these things start falling into place and it, and it really felt like um, the community wanted to see it happen. Yeah. We had people like, you were so incredibly generous with your time, completely prepared to pay you when Josh said, you're having a problem figuring this out, call Gavin. Yeah. Call you and, and you spend an hour with me, two mm-hmm. different times. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. A fan for life. <laughs> really. Like, it, that was incredible. It really blew me away. And Josh has been so, like, like amazing and tick. And like everybody was just like, no, we want to see you do this. Mm-hmm. You need to do this. Uh, and I'm like, okay. And so, you know, we, we put it together and we were just about to place the biggest order of speakers I've ever done in my life. Yeah. And then that is when Apple announced that they were going to embrace spatial audio. Yeah. Dolby Atmos. They mm-hmm. call it spatial audio. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had recently been fortunate to work with Jay Balvin on the uh, End to Ghetto track. So mm-hmm. we had done those lyrics. And then there was a testimonial from him in there. And it, that started to feel like universe telling you, like nudging you. Mm-hmm. So we're like, all right. Like I, I remember we were, I think we had listened. We had listened to the Trio 11s. Tick was leaving him at the studio for a little while so we could check him out. Mm-hmm. 
and the article came across, if I'm remembering this correctly. Anyway, I remember being at the studio and I walked inside and said, Jenny, you're not going to believe what just happened. <laughs> it was like Apple and Dolby are, are, are now kind of together mm-hmm. and this is coming. She, yeah. she was like, yep, go, 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 yeah. go, 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 go. So <laughs> f- f- that kicked off everything. We started, um, it, it really, everything fell into place. Like before the, the DART, the Dolby Atmos room design yes. tool, you know what that is. Yep. Our viewers might not. Mm-hmm. Um, was not available to the public. Right. But during this time, it suddenly was. Mm-hmm. Like I was asking, because Josh was telling me about it. He's like, oh, you know, sorry, Josh. He goes like, I might have a copy around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I said, no, man, I think I just found a link. Is this it? He goes, oh, yeah, that's it. He yeah. goes, never mind. Okay. Yeah. So, um, sorry, Josh, got you in trouble. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I dove into the dart and I was just like the very first day, I think I was up till 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. I just, it was so fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, I'm not an engineer by schooling, but like you, I kind of have this engineering mind. Like mm-hmm. the numbers are like, I like to know the angles. Like mm-hmm. I, I just nerded out yeah. so hard. Um, we even broke out the tape measure. We put the room into Google SketchUp. Yep. We 3D'd the whole thing. Um, I, I built Focal speakers in Google SketchUp so that we could... Um, actually place everything and mm-hmm. the speaker, the guy that did our speaker stands, um, Sean of Fortissimo, um, he sent us his CAD drawings so we could put those in. Like we laid everything out. Yeah. And and it just suddenly all came together. Yeah. Just very quickly. Well, and it's really interesting because we, we do a lot of Atmos, Dolby Atmos rooms from the ground up, but mm-hmm. then a lot of them are conversions like yours yeah. where it's going uh, from an existing room to Dolby Atmos and there's some Sometimes it just works out really nicely, and other times there's there's little things you got to work around as far as door and window placement, oh, and yeah. where speakers should be. But how how for you did that uh, pose a challenge, or was the room set up pretty well for it? No, I mean I remember very specifically when Wes designed the room. He said, "And when you're ready for five one, the room will do. The room will support it." Sure. Yeah. Great. Well, now we're doing 714. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the room has supported it. But so all the speakers all dropped into locations that are not a problem. Mm-hmm. That's they, good. they just work. Like, you know, you could walk through one of the doors and if you were just being a fool, you could hit, you a, could speaker, hit a speaker. But sure. like, but, but it, it works. And so far, I mean, we've had, you know, for some of our listening parties, we've had 12, 14 people in the control room. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it makes me nervous, but sure. everybody's been, it's been super cool. Yes. Every now and then you get someone, you catch them wanting to put their drink on the speaker. <laughs> so we got to talk about that. But um, the room in that respect for how it laid out, it just laid out. Yeah. The bigger problem that we had to solve, because I don't have a giant control room, mm-hmm. is where do you put two 18 inch rhythmic subs? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, have a, we have a loft in the back of the control room that um, also has a, ba- a big bass trap. But that loft is 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 structural. It's sound. Like you can yeah. you can sleep up there if you sure. really wanted to. So we put them up there. Oh, and nice. It, and it worked. Okay. It great. saved us a ton of floor space. But um, I know yeah. you and I were talking about uh, kind of the the soffits, right, mm-hmm. and in the front, and kind That's of reworking that. How we started. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I know that you had different speakers before, and then obviously mm-hmm. the size changed, and oh, you yeah. had to rework that. Was that a lot of lot of work to to get that done? Or it was. Yeah. It, it really really was because it, it was like you know to do this to do this right. Um, to put the speakers where they go, we thought about building new boxes and inside of the old boxes and all this stuff. And I just said, no, we're we're tearing it all out mm-hmm. because it it also didn't work out because how how we had to place the speakers, um, the old boxes weren't going to work. Yeah, so we gutted it. Yeah, we we gutted the, the we're just where the soffits are. Um, we we took them all the way back to the studs and mm-hmm. rebuilt the soffits. And you have a, a live room as well. Do you mm-hmm. have a ISO booth uh, too? Or? Sort of. I mean, yeah, we do. They're they're ISO booths that act more as like an amp room. Right. Like you could put a singer in there, but we learned a long time ago we don't like the sound of a booth. Yeah. And singers don't want to be in booths if they don't have to. So yeah. we just stopped using it as anything like that. So, um, like, yeah, we have a you know the con- you have the typical control room right, um, and then on the left and right you have these vestibules. Sure, those act as those can act as booths as you go into the live room. How what's the uh, divide between how much of your time is just spent mixing versus tracking these days? Oh well, there's been a shift in the studio. Mm-hmm. So um, Athena Wilkinson has taken on a lot of engineering duties. Yeah. Um, she is an amazing engineer and was an intern. Mm. And then when she finished her schooling, she bopped around, tried some different jobs. Um, long, I don't want to tell her story for her, but but it's kind of funny because we were on a classical recording gig. We do remote classical recordings as well. Um, 
and she, she walked up, she said, I have an idea for how, how to make money and then still do audio. And I want to be like a scheduling assistant and you need one. Yeah. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so that's how she, she kind of came back to us yeah. and kind of amusingly and very creatively got herself back in. Um, and, but very quickly, um, like, especially after she heard Atmos, she was like, I'm all in. Mm-hmm. She goes, I want all in. Yeah. I was like, all right. So we talked about what that looked like. And then we've been talking about like, how do you grow as a business, right? You have to think forward. Yeah. Um, I can't, you know, I can't be the person in the chair doing all of the things all the time, expect the business to grow. Right. And expect to, you know, have quality of life for forever. Like mm-hmm. that's not an age thing. It's just about working a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been 18 years of working weekends. Yeah. And so I said, you know, well, why don't we just start moving you into handling most of the recording? Mm-hmm. And then I'll handle the mixing and mastering, and that allows me to work on business dev yeah. and do fun interviews. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so she uh, has taken on 80%, 85% of the tracking. Nice. So it's it, maybe even 95, to be honest. Like it's, it's, do I don't you miss do any a of whole that? Lot. Sometimes, no. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. This, the studio is located about 100 feet from the house. And mm-hmm. like on a summer day, we have our, our windows propped open. It's Colorado. Yeah. And then even on, on a nice day, we'll, we don't hesitate to prop the doors open leading into the control room. Yeah. And so you can hear the laughter and the inside jokes yep. and the camaraderie. And you're like, uh, super FOMO at that yeah. point. Like, I get so, that too yeah. myself because I, you know, I do less for a long time. It's just me. So I was doing all the CAD drawings, all the modeling, all the right. everything. And then now it's, uh, I have, six other people soon to be seven that they're they're doing a lot of those things that i'm checking and adjusting and then uh, but it is something where i find myself i don't do at least a little bit of that i get a little little crabby and sure uh, you know it's like i have to at least fill that cup a little bit every once in a while um but uh but with the 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 mixing and mastering side of things uh, how often are you just getting things from outside that you didn't track that you, that you're mixing. No, sure. Um, we do get a fair amount of mastering work from outside the studio. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a handful of engineers in Denver that that trust us with their mastering, so they send us their work, and then we get stuff um, just from outside the studio, just mm-hmm. just through word of mouth. Yeah. Um, occasionally, we'll get stuff through uh, some of the more audio centric gig websites, like a Sound Better or a Air. Yeah. Not, well, we're not really on Air gigs, but. Um, en- engineers, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, uh, it's, you know, we, we master everything that comes, almost everything that comes through the studio. We definitely mix mm-hmm. everything that comes through the studio. So, you know, Athena's doing a lot of recording. We'll often share the mixing and then do the mastering. Yeah. And then Amos kind of depends on, um, just kind of who's schedule really. Sure. So the, uh, I know last year at NAM we, um, stopped by the uh, panel that you were on at Focal yeah, and, thank you. uh, and it was you and also Luca Predalesi and Robert mm-hmm. Guzman from studio DMI, which we did their studio. Right. And, and, uh, so it was just great to, to see you there. And you were talking about the album you did for story of the year. Yes. Um, it's uh, tear me to pieces. Is that what? tear me to pieces? Yeah. yeah. Athena, and, I have to be clear. I have to, I have to clear my conscience real quick. Yeah. Athena couldn't go that year and I feel horrible. We should have found a way to make her go. Cause she was, she was co-mixer on that album. Okay. So she gets, gotcha. she needs to make sure we give her credit for that. It sounds great. And it was funny because that night after that panel, we went to uh, Atmos Room that we designed in Redondo Beach that oh, cool. we're going to do a studio tour here soon on. And uh, we listened to, to that album on on uh, on their setup, and it was awesome. Okay. It sounded Good. great. Because you, you were talking about how you were um, placing the guitars uh, and, and how you were kind of uh, mixing per frequency and how you changed sure. the height of, of the guitars in there. And it was just cool to hear you talk about that at NAMM and then that night be able to okay. hear it in a really great space. So, Good. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, you know, any, any Anytime someone says, so I listen to your mix, you kind of go, oh God, here we go. No, no, it's amazing. You do amazing work. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, sometimes if you get, you know, if all the rhythm guitars are in a stem and you can't separate them, then what do you do? How do you mm-hmm. make something bigger without completely tearing it to pieces? Ah, uh, nice. Sorry. That is amazing. We should cut now. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now. Sounds great. What kind of things are you working on these days that you can talk about? Anything? Uh... Sure. Um, well, so last year we did um, we did an album for of Mice and Men. So we did the oh, Tether album good. in Atmos. That was a that was a huge win for the team. Um, mm-hmm. And we did that in collaboration with Chris Athens Mastering. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Athens will often get artists come through that that say, "Hey, we also need Atmos," and they say, "Well, we have a guy." Nice. And so that ends up that comes across. Then that comes across our desk, and then I I, I then it's a, a co master that in immersive with Chris. We work together to make sure that that meets spec. Right. Um, 
but go, oh my gosh, what can we talk about? Uh, there's nothing I can actually say. There's, I'm doing a lot of, what's interesting is bands, what they want right now. No one's asking for anything for free. Yeah. Um, at least at the label level, mm-hmm. but they at least, they're at least curious. And so yeah. we're, we're very generous with like a proof of concept. Yeah. Like, Hey, let us s- send us what you have. We'll, we'll spend a little bit of time mm-hmm. just so you kind of understand what the workflow looks like, what the process looks like. Mm-hmm. So, so to that, and, um, there's one album I really want to talk about right now, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're on board, but I can't. But you can't, I can't do it. Yeah, that's all good. It. I really want to, but we have f- five big. They're they're at least for us they are. They're that's they're awesome. they're big albums that that uh there's there's a whole not a whole lot of but there's a very much in a discovery phase. Yeah, they're they're trying so the, to, they're, they're, are... they're they're knee deep in the water. Uh huh. And they're like, okay, all right, yeah, all right. The water's clear. Everything's cool. So all those things are the ones that you'll look back in the start of 2025 and be like, how can we do that again? These are the ones. You're I, talking actually, about. <laughs> those, those are what I'm. So so to that. So this is this is important, and 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 I don't. I hope this doesn't come off in an ego way, but at the end of the year, when you're when things or just when things feel like you have to stop and think about like having any sort of career in audio is such like if you can pay your bills in audio, it is so incredibly rare. That is true. And so like we sat down as a team, and I was like, we have to remember that, mm-hmm. like of my and Men, story of the year, some of the stuff that we've worked on, right? There's eight billion people in the world, or something like that. You can probably check those numbers, yeah. like. And this team did that. Yeah. Like, just think about that. Like, yes. we, like when we're thinking like, oh, no, business, like, no, we're doing fine. It's yes. fine. Right? It's totally fine. So, yeah. So uh, I, I will probably look back and t- mm-hmm. yeah, it, it'll be, a, remember, yeah, you're I, doing cool stuff. I do take time to pause because there's sometimes, I mean, it's almost every week I hear some song on the radio that was done in a room we designed. And it's oh, just like, great. what in the world? I, I pinch myself and say like, uh, like we did, you know, both of the um, members of Twenty One Pilots, we did their studios. And Congratulations! Yeah, it was very cool. And um, and my niece is a huge fan of theirs. And it's just like you have these moments where it's like we're backstage at the concert. My niece is going to meet the band, oh, and it's man. just like there's all these people that love this band, but we were the ones who designed their studio. It's like it's uh, it's you. a really co- cool thing. So well, absorb it, embrace it, lean into that too, because you do great work. Thank you. Uh, you really do. Like y'all, I mean, all the success that you're having is very well deserved. Oh, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. That's uh, it's it, as you're as you're going through the year, and you're just because we all work very hard, and it, in order to keep things going, you have to to work hard, and you can't just rest on your laurels and all no. that. But um, it is nice to stop every once in a while and just be like, it's okay to celebrate this for a second. You know? Yeah, before. it's okay. Like yeah. it just like you know when we it it seemed silly at the time. It seemed. <sighs> It seemed a bit over the top, but when, you know, when, when Jay Balvin was up for a Grammy, Mm -hmm. it was like, guys, guess what? Yeah. Right. We held a little Grammy party, a little Grammy watching party. Yeah. We learned a lot about the Grammys that year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. (laughs) (laughs) We were so naive about it. So out of touch. Like I kept waiting for, cause you know, growing up watching them, I kept waiting for the announcement. Like we're gonna have a party and there's gonna be an announcement. Yeah. My sister calls me before the Grammys are even on like on televised mm-hmm. and says, I have some bad news. No. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking? How do you know this? It hasn't even started she's, yet. She's like, brother, they've already announced it. Yeah. And there's this whole other, there's this whole other side of the Grammys mm-hmm. that starts at like noon. Yeah. Yeah. The, I had no, I, I was just, I it's, no idea. it's one of those things where like um, Saturday night uh, is the tech awards here at the Nail yeah. show and we're um, nominated for studio design. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, which is very, very cool. And, you know, we're going there. We have a, a table. We did a studio. It's in Traverse City, Michigan uh, for Chip Freeman and uh, just an awesome space. And I'm very excited for, for him, even more than us, that it got nominated. And but we we have a table and like it's all of us involved in the project are going to be there together. Very and it's like. Cool. I have no expectation of winning necessarily. It's just cool to be there. But um, uh, it is one of those kind of nerve wracking things when they yeah. open the envelope and you're just like, is it going to happen? Is it yeah. not? You know? So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Oh, but, you got this. Yeah. yeah you we'll, got this. we'll see. But uh, man, I really appreciate you taking time to do this. It's been awesome no, it's catching just, up you. and, and uh, um, excited to see you know more and more things that you guys are doing and, and i hope that maybe sometime this year we can figure out a time for you to come out there and check out your studio so. i hope so i yeah. really hope so i'd love to have you up you're welcome anytime awesome thank you so much thank Matt. you 
Well, that's been another episode of The Sound Project. If you have any comments about uh, what the future of Dolby Atmos is for, for you or your colleagues, please feel free to comment below, and we'll see you next week.